Welcome back to Real Democracy versus The Illusion of Democracy. Unit 2. In which form of democracy would you most care to participate? Imagine that you lived in a community of 100 people enclosed in an environment like Earth but much smaller with the most modern information communications technologies and enough resources to sustain all of you forever as long as you all cooperated to manage all of the resources wisely. How would you choose to participate in such a community? Or more specifically, how would you as one of the 100 care to relate to the other 99 and how would you care to have them relate to you? Would you choose A, to participate in a hierarchical based system wherein one or a few live like kings and queens in control of most of the resources, making all of the most important decisions and all of the most important rules, while the rest of the community spend their lives competing against one another just to survive? Alternatively, would you choose B, an equality-based system, wherein each member of the community is afforded an opportunity to participate equally in all of the decision-making processes within as many or as few as each one cared to participate. Take some time to think about this question and perhaps discuss it with your friends and classmates. Then, make your decision as though your future and the future of humanity depends on what you decide. If you chose A, a hierarchical based system, wherein a few live like kings and queens in control of most of the resources, making all of the most important decisions and all of the most important rules, while the rest of the community spend their lives competing against one another just to survive, congratulations, you're in luck. Because on a much larger scale, you are just where you care to be in terms of modern day democracy, in the community of humanity, in an environment called the biosphere on a planet called Earth. However, if you chose B, an equality-based system, wherein each member of the community is afforded the opportunity to participate equally in all of the decision-making processes within as many or as few as each one cares to participate? Unfortunately, you are not so lucky. But that does not mean you have to accept the status quo. For example, even though so many people have been indoctrinated and brainwashed into believing that food and water are commodities that must be bought and paid for by money earned in the servitude of others, the fact of, is that such resources except for the human labor involved, are provided freely by Earth. Who was it that decided that a small minority of people should rule over the vast majority? Who was it that decided those same people could control most of Earth's resources while charging the masses for the water, fruits, and vegetables that Earth provides for free? I don't recall voting on any issue that asked us if we wanted to give 50% of the world's wealth to just 1% of the population, do you? Of course not, because our so-called democracies only allow the 99% to vote every two to four years. And even then, our choices are extremely limited to say the least. Think about it. Even if a truly honest, good person gets elected to the presidency, it will have cost a huge amount of money. Where do you think most of that money comes from? It certainly doesn't come from the poorest people, the ones with the most need. In the next unit, we will pinpoint the main problem with today's democracies, from which we are then able to begin designing possible solutions. In the meantime, here are some questions to consider. 
what do you think the status quo of who has the power and control within society is based upon? In other words, what factors mostly determines who will have the most power within our societies? Number two, how would you define an equality-based system of decision-making? Number three, how would you define a hierarchical-based system of decision-making? Number four, what do you think is the difference between an equality-based system and a hierarchical-based system? And number five, if you had the authority to redistribute the global wealth, what would you do?